Welcome to worship for this, our fifth uh, midweek Lenten service, our service of prayer and preaching. Uh, we'll have the bulletin posted to the church website so that you can use that alongside the service if you so like. Uh, we begin with our opening versicles from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, where St. John writes, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride and possessions, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Mark chapter 15, where St. Mark writes, And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. We continue with our responsory. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. 
We continue with today's sermon entitled, Worldly Eyes. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We use the adjective worldly in two different but related senses. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines these as, number one, having a lot of practical experience and knowledge about life in the world, and number two, of or relating to the human world and ordinary life rather than to religious or spiritual matters. In our reading, just now from Mark chapter 15, we see both senses of the term worldly at work with Pontius Pilate, among the Jewish chief priests, among the crowds, and with the Roman soldiers, all looking at Jesus with worldly eyes. In the Roman Empire, you didn't rise to the power level that Pilate had risen to and that he enjoyed without a very worldly worldview. As a governor, everything boils down to convincing the emperor of your ongoing worth. So above all, you have to look out for yourself well before anyone else. Pilate was a man with worldly desires and ambitions. Pilate was worldly in the sense of not really caring personally about any religious matters. As governor over Judea, the large population of highly religious Jews was constantly a thorn in his side. Pilate and his peers pursued a system of policy, of, of persecution, of provocation of the Jews. But given all of this, it's actually surprising to see Pilate effectively cooperating with the Jewish leaders at Jesus' trial. It's true that Pilate thought that Jesus was innocent. That was based on his own investigation as well as from a dream of warning his wife had had. And yet Pilate's worldliness won out in the end. His religious skepticism is on full display when he asks Jesus that question, what is truth? He rejects the beaten and bloodied truth standing right there before him. Pilate's attitude toward worldly affairs is evidenced by him granting the Jews the execution of Jesus, even as the wicked murderous Barabbas went free. For him, it was better to pacify the Jews rather than place his position of power in jeopardy if they decided to rebel over this insignificant Jew that some called the king of the Jews. But Pilate wasn't alone. The Jewish leaders had worldly eyes as well. The Sadducees saw Jesus' popularity as a threat to their power, the power that they enjoyed through compromises with the Romans. The Pharisees saw Jesus as a competitor to their religious influence, and they knew that he opposed their legalistic works righteousness theology. So the worldly Jewish leaders stirred up the crowds to demand Jesus' crucifixion. And finally, the Roman soldiers had worldly eyes as well. They believed that they knew a king when they saw one. And this Jesus was the opposite of their view of royalty. Many of them had seen Caesar himself. Others had seen kings from the east during military campaigns. And still others could envision with their mind's eye glorious kings with all of their pomp and circumstance. But this Jewish carpenter, beaten and bloodied, wearing a crown of thorns betrayed by his own people, this was a joke. Their bowing down and praising Jesus was... Nothing but mockery. Hail, King of the Jews! Ironically, Pilate and the soldiers got it right. Regardless of what was going on in their hearts, they correctly called Jesus the King of the Jews. He is, in fact, the eternal Messiah, promised to Adam and Eve, promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and all of God's chosen people in Israel. But as Jesus told Pilate in John chapter 18, my kingdom is not of this world. Rather, he came into this world from heaven 
to bear witness to the truth. And here is the truth. Jesus was and is a king, but not a worldly one. He is the heavenly God and King, God's only Son in the flesh. And while the way of the world might look for power and glory in its rulers, the true God glories in suffering and the cross, manifesting His power through the saving gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. Crucify Him! Crucify Him! The crowds cried. Crucify Him! Cried God the Father from His sapphire throne. Crucify Me! Cried the obedient Son of God. St. John said in our epistle reading just a little while ago, whoever does the will of God abides forever. And this first and foremost refers to Jesus himself. He came from heaven to earth to do his Father's will, to draw all men to himself as he was hanging on that cross, bearing the sins of the whole world, dying for the very life of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, to reconcile the world to himself, not counting men's trespasses against them. You. Well, are you in the world? Then yes, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And if he bore your worldly sins on the cross, then they are no longer on you. If your sins are placed upon him through your baptism into Christ, through absolution, through the Lord's Supper, then they most certainly must not continue to weigh you down with guilt and shame. Instead, you should consider them to be as far away from you as the east is from the west, drowned in the very depths of the sea. Because that is the truth of the gospel. In Christ, you have been set free from sin, death, and hell. And all you have to look forward to now is eternal righteousness, everlasting life, and resurrection in God's kingdom through faith in Jesus Christ. As Jesus says, His kingdom is not of this world. So you are not called to a worldly mindset, but instead to a heavenly one. As St. Paul writes to all those who are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection in Colossians chapter 3, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Jesus prayed to his Father for you on the very night when he was betrayed. You can read that prayer in John chapter 17, but especially in verses 14 to 15, where Jesus prays, Father, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Satan, the evil one, would lead you to share the worldly postmodern view expressed by Pilate, what is truth? This religious skepticism leads people to despair. It leads them either to desire to get out of this apparently God-forsaken world through suicide or to extreme worldliness saying, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. But not you. You know the truth about the world. As St. John writes, all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God, 
abides forever. And this is God's will, that we would embrace and ever hold fast to the truth of the cross by which the world is crucified to us and we to the world. This is God's saving way, no matter what your worldly status is in this fallen creation. As St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 through 31, For consider your callings, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of Him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please bow with me in prayer. God of love, you lifted up your Son on the cross so that you would draw all people unto him. Fill us with thanksgiving for this incredible love that we dare to believe is ours. Help us to be faithful servants of your new covenant, reaching out to all those whom you claim through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in your hymnal on page 288 with the litany. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord, from all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your gracious and glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We, poor sinners, implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and to govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, 
to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and to provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all, we implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Lord, or O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. We continue by praying together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, you have mercy on us that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the eternal things. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.